I've made a video game. It started out looking like this. Two of what I guess he would call chubby little witches, wandering around a forest clearing out hostile slime for the local townspeople. That was the idea. What I ended up with was this. But how did I come to this, I hear you say? Well, let's talk game design. The Brackies Jam happened this last week. For those who don't know, Brackies was, or is, a YouTube channel full of handy tutorials for people wanting to learn how to make video games. And although the channel itself has officially retired this year, the jam went ahead anyway. Over 10,000 people joined up, but I can't tell you how many people actually submitted something, because at the time of me recording this video, the jam hasn't ended yet. However, my game, as it turns out, is done. The theme for the jam was Stronger Together, and initially I arrived at two witches, working together to decimate the local slime population, in a sort of Pied Piper of Hamlin way. The idea was that they shared the same mana pool, so they could only fire magic if they were within close proximity of each other, which would be indicated by a twiddly little magic rope thing, showing how connected they were. I was going to go on to make little block and switch puzzles, which could only be activated by one character, and enemies that had to be shot with a particular colour shot. You know, the stuff that immediately jumped into your head when you saw this, because you're an intelligent and savvy person. Then, something happened that not a lot of game developers tend to talk about. I'm not the kind of person to ever shy away from talking about mental health issues, particularly my own, and I don't mind telling you that this last week was not, in that context, a great time for me. I get quite severe bouts of depression, and have done for a long time, to the point that I know how to manage them effectively and essentially ride out the wave of the big sad. This last week happened to be just such a time, and as I got two days into my Little Witch Slime project, I could barely bring myself to open up Construct 3 and do anything. On a semi-related note, which I promise is relevant, please stay with me, this channel has just passed its six month anniversary. I am incredibly proud of where we've got to so far, and I love what we're accomplishing together, but to get here means that I've put out at least one video a week for the last six months. In that time, I've made 10 games for various game jams and other projects, and I've been working reasonably constantly on Reiterate, which you should go wishlist on Steam. All of this while moving house, keeping up a full-time job, dealing with my mom going into hospital with that virus everybody's sick of talking about, and a cavalcade of other normal boring life things, like putting the bins out and having a seemingly infinite pile of dirty dishes to wash up. I'm not telling you any of this for sympathy, because really sympathy doesn't do me any good, it actually just makes me feel guilty. The reason I bring it up is that I started to experience pretty bad burnout. Burnout is a term that will be familiar to anyone who's consistently done any kind of long-term creative project for a considerable amount of time. It affects everyone differently, but the best way that I can describe it is that it feels like you've used up your allotted resource of productivity, and you're basically running on empty. This is not the first time it's happened to me, and I'm sure it won't be the last, which thankfully means that I roughly know how to deal with it. Believe it or not, in contrast to what you might think is obvious, the worst thing I could do is stop altogether. Isaac Newton's first law of inertia states that an object in motion will stay in motion, whereas an object at rest will stay at rest, unless acted on by some outside force. Isaac Newton's friends and peers replied with, shut up nerd, and then went to an exciting party that they didn't invite him to. What I mean is that if I were to stop completely, there's a very real danger that I'd never start again, and LTGD and everything I want to accomplish would become a distant memory, and five years from now you'd be sat there thinking, man, I wonder what happened to that guy. I won't let that happen because I have an ego the size of Switzerland and I refuse to be forgotten. Instead, what I need to do is slow down, ease my foot off the metaphorical gas pedal, and wait for my productivity reserves to fill back up again. This will be a familiar technique to anyone who's ever played a mage in an MMO, which is clearly the best class to play, and I invite you all to argue about that in the comments below. Anyway, to cut a long story short, the witches sadly had to go. They'd require too much thought and creativity because, as you can see, I was perilously close to putting effort into the art and presentation, and I had no way of keeping that up. Instead, it was time to fall back into my comfort zone and do something that I personally find very easy. Geometric shapes and fancy glowy blurry effects. Let me introduce you to Asymmetry, an asymmetric single player co-op game that is one part 2D platformer and one part top down shooter. The basic idea is that either one player or your left hand controls the black square on the left 
moving around with infinite jumping ability to collect other, somehow subtly different black squares. Every time you do, this will spawn a collectible on the other side where the white square is controlled by either player 2 or your right hand, and must then collect those falling pickups with standard top-down 8 directional movement. The white square needs to collect 100 of these falling stars, which aren't star-shaped but shush, to complete the game. The entire thing is on a timer, so if the gameplay grabs you, there's some replayability to be had in trying to beat your fastest time. I realise I've rambled on a bit since I brought it up, so just to remind you, the Jam's theme was Stronger Together, and as you can see, it fits that in multiple ways. Either you and a friend can play together in co-op, making you both stronger players than if you played alone, or your two hands must work in tandem to do more than one hand could do alone. Or, you can go to the set control screen and put both sets of controls onto the same buttons, meaning you're now playing both sides with just one hand, and therefore that having both control layouts together makes you stronger at the game. There's also a neat little feature where your controllable squares will grow and shrink depending on how recently the opposite player collected something. This means if you're in sync and working together properly, both sides will have an advantage in doing their job. You will be stronger together. Like I said, this is very much in my comfort zone, and if you look back through my back catalogue, you'll notice I have a pretty strong predilection for either platformers or top-down shooters. This is exactly what I needed to combat my burnout, something I felt comfortable making that wouldn't take much time investment. In fact, the game was done in a couple of days and the basic gameplay was complete in about 20 minutes, with the rest of the time spent adding frivolous polish and needless particle effects for fun. Now, this is not my best work. The mechanics are interesting as a starting point, but they're not really fleshed out and they don't exactly evolve over time. But I think it's a novel enough concept to stand on its own for a game jam, and for reasons I think I've already covered, there's not much more I felt like I could do right now. The game is also much more fun if you play it with another person, because of course it is. Games are inherently better if you're playing them with someone you like. Which is why the phrase, this game is better if you play with your friends, is meaningless when you're doing a review. Because everything is better if you do it with your friends, that's why they're your friends. Anyway, the game is done. If you're watching this video after Sunday, the link will be in the description. But if you're not, then it won't, because I'd like to submit reasonably close to the deadline. I would actually really appreciate some feedback on this one, because I don't think I've ever played a game before where you're technically playing two different genres at once. It's one of those ideas that initially makes you think, wow, I can't believe someone hasn't done this before, and then maybe you conclude, wow, sometimes there's a really good reason why this hasn't been done before. I'm not sure about it, but it really is the best I can do this week, so it'll have to do. I'd like to apologise to anyone who saw the cute little witch slime thing I had going on and got very excited because it looked good. I think so too, and one day maybe I'll go back to them, and we can flesh that out a bit. But the time just isn't right. The world is just not ready. I'd also like to say thank you to the LTGD Discord server, and I promise this is still related to the game jam. Some of the people I've had the good fortune to get to know, because of the last six months worth of work, are some of the nicest, most creative and most supportive people I've ever met. And the same goes for my comments section here on YouTube. You're all just lovely, really. Lovely, wonderful, nice, talented, smart, attractive people, who I appreciate a lot. And how is this relevant? Well, like I said, the Bracky's Game Jam theme is stronger together. And I think with you lot behind me, we really are. Perhaps the real Bracky's Game Jam entry was the friends we made along the way. I can't say that with a straight face. <laughs> Hopefully you found something to like about this video, and if you have, leave a like, and please also consider subscribing so you can see how this whole burnout phase plays out. Then join our Discord to hang out with some cool people, and wishlist reiterate on Steam so I can wake up every morning and smile at the growing number of people who'd like to play something I've made. Stay safe, be well, look after yourself, and I'll see you the next time I'm thinking, hey, let's talk game design.